Moving on to our next presenter, um, Evgenia Dubinina. Um, she's a PhD candidate and researcher at Charles University in Prague um, and focuses on taxation, international corporate tax avoidance, public international and development economics. So the stage is yours, uh, Evgenia. Thank you. Uh, thank to everyone, especially for organizers, for having our paper here at the conference. So I'm Evgenia, and uh, this project is co-authored with uh, Katerina Bilitska from Utah University and Petr Jansky, my supervisor from Charles University. And the paper is called Fiscal Consequences of Corporate Tax Avoidance. So let's start. The big picture question topic that we ask here is how does profit shifting affect tax revenue structure? Um, probably all of you know that uh, tax avoidance increasing over time and uh, profit shifting uh, has been increasing, you know, like among multinationals nowadays. And uh, the tax losses and also profit shifting estimated by a lot of researchers, especially Gabriel Zuckman, also Petr Jansky, they are really high. Profit shifting comes at the forefront of political debate, especially after implementation of global minimum tax. Uh, but still, we don't know how, uh, what are the con uh, consequences of uh, tax avoidance practices for where governments derive their tax revenues from. I will explain in a minute what do we mean by that. So the research question that we ask here is how does profit shifting affect tax revenue structure? We use two quasi-experimental variations. First is based on cross-country differences profit shifting. And the second one, um, we move to causal um, inference, like the changes in municipal tax rates in Germany over a 12-year period. Um, we have two sets of results, so based on country level and based on municipality level. And briefly, I will, uh, I will show you like some findings. So first, at the country level, with the increase of profit shifting, there is uh, logically a decrease in corporate tax revenue. At the same time, there is an increase in individual tax revenue and VAT. If we move to municipality level, briefly, the main results, we see that municipalities with high tax rates and more tax aggressive multinationals, they have lower share of tax revenues from those firms. I will explain in future slides uh, what do we mean by aggressive multinationals. And with tax rate increase, um, a share of tax revenue derived from this tax decrease, but this only holds for municipalities with high share of aggressive multinationals. Let's move to first uh, country level correlations. And um, I will start with the data. Uh, we have a data from, uh, of course, Univider GRD and also from IMF uh, GFS. And profit shifting estimates come from uh, the really uh, good paper from Torsloff et al. Um, I think that the year uh, that is published now is 2023. So it's for uh, estimates for four years and for 40 countries. Uh, what they do in their paper, they use foreign affiliate statistics to compare uh, the profitability of foreign firms inside countries and the uh, domestic one. And uh, they receive results and profitability, so differences in profitability, and they construct from these differences uh, the profit shifting uh, estimates as a percentage of GDP. And uh, we use uh, these estimates uh, for our analysis. So what do we have? Like. Uh, to summarize the tax revenue structure and profit shifting estimates. If uh, we look at uh, several pictures, just correlations, on the vertical axis, we have corporate tax revenue as a percentage of total tax revenue. And on the horizontal axis, we have profit shifting estimates as a percentage of GDP from Torsloff paper. And what do we see? That there is a slight by decrease in the relationship. So with increase of profit shifting, there is a decrease in the corporate tax revenue as a percentage of total tax revenue. At the same time, if we look at a um, similar picture, but on vertical axis, we have individual tax revenue as a percentage of total tax revenue. We have the opposite picture. And uh, the third picture that I want to show you, uh, 
it's the same, but the vertical axis is about VAT. And again, we have the positive relationship. So here we could think uh, that governments could substitute probably uh, corporate tax revenue losses with individual tax revenue and VAT. If we want to quantify these results, we could look at this table. And what do we see here? That uh, with increase of profit shifting, there is a decrease by almost 1.5 percentage point in corporate tax revenue. At the same time, there is an increase by 3.5 uh, in individual tax revenue as a percentage of total tax revenue, and by almost two percentage points in VAT. So again, we could think about this, that governments could substitute between corporate revenue losses and uh, with the individual and VAT revenues. And what is like more even interesting that we find no negative effects on total tax revenues. So governments could more than compensate with different sources of the data, uh, of revenues. Here, it's uh, the first panel is the same as the table that was uh, previously shown. Uh, so it's corporate tax revenues, like all tax shares as a percentage of uh, total tax revenue. The second panel is about tax rates, uh, corporate tax rates, individual tax rates, and so on. The third panel, the last one, is about also tax shares, but as a percentage of GDP. And uh, uh, the left column is uh, without controls, regressions without controls, and on the right we have regressions with controls. And if we try to compare the first panel and the third panel, we see the same trends. So uh, profit shifting, uh, the relation between profit shifting and corporate tax revenue is negative, and the relation between profit shift and individual tax revenues or VAT is positive one. And if we look at corporate tax rates and uh, profit shifting, we see that there is a negative effect. And here we could think that uh, governments could try to keep multinationals uh, inside uh, governments, inside countries, uh, with lower tax rates. And now we move to municipality level analysis, Germany context. And I will start with the institutional framework of uh, Germany. Uh, Germany tax revenue is collected from different sources and uh, like federal and state and municipality level. And f federal and state accounts for almost 80% and uh, mainly it's about personal and corporate income and VAT. And uh, what is even more interesting that municip municipalities, they are responsible for tax rates of trade tax and property tax, and also tax revenues der derived from these taxes. Uh, so trade tax, if we move to a municipality level, is levied on um, companies' profits, and uh, it has the base rate, and, uh, which is equal across municipalities. And there is a multiplier, which is different across municipalities. And they have control over this multiplier. And about property tax, um, like the, the structure is the same, that um, there is a base rate, and there is, which is equal across municipalities, and uh, there is a multiplier which is different. Uh, and uh, it accounts almost like for uh, 14 percentage. Um, if we talk about like the rest, uh, the rest is apportioned uh, to and from federal and state. Um, but the most important thing that uh, we need to understand from this slide that uh, municipalities control tax rates and tax revenue derived from trade tax and property tax because it's important for our identification strategy. The data comes from two main sources. The first source is German Statistical Office. Uh, the data is available online so everybody could download it. Uh, for 11,000 municipalities, for um, years like from 2008 till 2019. And um, also we have another source, it's Orbis database. But uh, as you know, Orbis database, it's about firm level, but we have uh, municipality level analysis. And what we do here, we obtain, um, so we download the data from Orbis uh, for Germany. We obtain location for over 
almost uh, 4 million firm, German firms, who match addresses to municipalities using GIST software. And uh, then we actually identified the ownership structure, if it's domestic one or multinational one. And then we classify this multi uh, multinational into aggressive one and not aggressive one. So if multinational has at least one subsidiary in tax haven, we say that uh, this multinational is the aggressive one. So this is uh, how we define the aggressiveness of multinational. In the end of uh, this process, we received like, approximately 20,000 subsidiaries. Eight of them, uh, 8,000 of them uh, belong to more aggressive multinationals. And as you remember, like, so the unit of file analysis municipality level, and uh, what we do here, we actually collapse the data from from level to municipality level, and we receive the share of aggressive multinationals for each municipality. So again, like if we summarize the data, so we have the tax revenue structure, and we have uh, the profit shifting estimates, but it's represented as uh, aggressiveness of multinationals, the share of aggressiveness for each municipality. Our identification strategy based on two things. First is uh, differences in tax rates across municipalities, and the second one is differences in the shares of aggressive multinationals inside municipalities. And uh, we have two sets of results. First is cross-sectional variation. If you look at uh, the equation, so on the left side, we have different outcome variables, tax revenues, trade tax revenues, property tax revenues, total tax revenues. And on the right side, we have the share of aggressive multinationals for each year. Um, uh, not for each year, but for each municipality. Then we have tax rates, and then we have multiplication of two and uh, the set of controls and fixed effects. Then we move to event study. And uh, event study based on the fact that more than 90% of municipalities increased their trade tax rates. Uh, some of them increased like not only once. Um, then we move to several maps uh, that I want to show you before we go to the results. Um, this is a map of number of aggressive multinationals across municipalities. So with darker color, we have a higher number of aggressive multinationals in, inside municipality. The white color is like we don't have the data, the gray one is like the smallest number. And we see a variation across municipalities in terms of the number of aggressive multinationals. If we move to the next map, it's about trade tax multipliers. Again, uh, darker color means uh, higher trade tax multipliers. And uh, what is more even important, that the variation here differs from the variation that we had like on previous slide. And the third map that I want to show you is about number of trade tax rate increases. As I mentioned, it was for uh, some municipalities even like several times. So with dark color, it's, um, these are municipalities that increase their trade tax rate like from five to nine, nine times during the 12 year period. And then if we want to quantify um, our results, uh, we could uh, look at this table. So the first panel, panel A, it's about aggressive multinationals. And the second panel, uh, panel B, is for, uh, it's placebo, um, it's for all multinationals. And um, if we look at panel A, we could see that with tax rate increase and high share of aggressive multinationals, there is a decrease in trade tax share. There is a decrease in trade tax revenue. At the same time, nothing happens with property tax revenue. And there is a decrease in total tax revenue. But what is even more interesting that if we try to compare uh, with the second panel, so placebo, uh, we see that uh, there are no effects. So it's only about aggressive multinationals that have opportunity to move their profits. If we move to event study analysis, we could look at this picture. So vertical axis is about the share of tax revenue in all tax revenues. And uh, the gray color uh, is about trade tax, and uh, the orange one is about property tax. And with, we see that with trade tax increase, 
there is a decrease in uh, the trade tax as a percentage of total tax revenue, but nothing happens for the property tax revenue. If we uh, look at uh, absolute values, so uh, ta uh, total tax revenues on vertical axis, and uh, we have trade tax, um, the blue one, uh, property tax, uh, the red one, a uh, total tax, the green one. We see that with tax rate increase, there is a decrease in uh, trade tax revenue and also um, property tax, um, sorry, uh, trade tax revenue and total tax revenue. But nothing again happens with property tax revenue, which is logical because uh, property couldn't be like shifted uh, so fast. The takeaway from our paper um, are the following. So uh, the ability of, to shift profits tightly connected with tax revenue structure. Um, countries that are more exposed to uh, profit shifting uh, could rely more on indirect taxes. And on municipality level, uh, more, uh, profit shifting is causally linked to with the lower revenue shares coming from corporations for the trade tax. If we think about policy impl implications from our study, we could think of the following. So we show how governments could raise revenues in the absence uh, or losses from corporate tax revenue and uh, which groups bear the tax burden. And if we think that uh, like from research uh, in the literature, uh, we uh, see that if indirect tax is a more aggressive one, um, it's like food for thought, like it could amplify inequalities. And the uh, presence of uh, aggressive multinationals inside municipalities could decrease the capacity, tax capacity of multinationals. Thank you very much. Uh, your thoughts, like questions, are really welcome. <laughs>